So Cruella 2021 is finally here and what the heck was this movie? The writing of this movie is on a whole new level of ridiculousness even for a Disney live action remake. That's how low the bar has been set here. Some scenes were so painfully bad it was unbelievable. Although I knew they would rewrite a cruel woman who wants to skin puppies into a victim with a tragic backstory, glamorize her, give her girl power moments and whatever, there are things that I could have never possibly imagined to actually be in this movie. You're sad if you think that looks good. Cruella stealing puppies and hearts. Puppies and hearts! The praise for this movie is pathetic. So let's talk about this utter disaster of a movie, shall we? So this movie is about Stella. And it starts right with her birth. We actually get to see the moment she was born and I'm like, okay, I'm not sure exactly why Disney wanted to show us this uplifting scene of Cruella being born, but I knew things would only get worse from here. And guess what? They did. Stella's hair is obviously an issue here, because of course it must be, but why? Why does her hair have to be an issue? Her hair made her look frightening and unique in the original 1961 movie. This is another reason why 2D animated movies worked. You could have bizarre or realistic things just as black and white here, but it was okay because it was an animated movie. But once you replicate all those things in real life through live action remakes, it just looks odd, and trying to give an excuse for that makes things even worse. Just stop it. This movie also pathetically tries to reference the original 101 Dalmatians movie, and it was painful. It's cruel. Her name's Estella, not Cruella. Painful, as you can see. Disney still remembers that this character originally wanted to kill puppies to make coats and not adopt them, right? Quick footnote here. The dogs were sort of an issue because sometimes they were real-life dogs, sometimes they were CGI dogs, they would swap one from the other mid-scenes, it was quite obvious and it was very distracting and looked pretty bad. So Stella goes to the school and what an insufferable little brat she is. She also befriends Anita, yet another red-headed character who got blackwashed. Welcome to the race swapped characters club. Plus, Disney remembers that Cruella stole the puppies from Anita's dog Perdita, right? The only thing that wasn't bad in this entire school segment was that it made me sympathize with Estella's mother. She's concerned about her daughter's well-being, she tries to make Stella let go of her Cruella persona, and she's clearly put in a lot of effort for the sake of her daughter. So they go to this huge mansion with this weird fashion exposition going on, and everyone is dressed like if they were a member of the French court right before the French Revolution started. It looked awful. There's also this thing about this necklace. I warned this will lead us somewhere. So Stella breaks her promise to wait for her mom in the car after 10 seconds. She sneaks inside the mansion and then gets chased by Dalmatians after being spotted. 10 minutes have barely passed and we already have one of the most painful scenes of this movie. The dogs are chasing down Cruella. She trips down and rolls down the grass. Then the dogs jump right over Cruella and charge right at her mother, making her fall off the cliff at the edge of the mansion's property and she dies. What did I just see? What's the actual heck? So Stella goes to London and befriends Horace and Jasper. And oh boy, kids Jasper acting was very bad. Sunshine passes and now they are a family of thieves. <laughs> Stella gets a chance to have a job at the workplace of her dreams, owned by the greatest fashion designer of London, the Baroness. I love it how Jasper had to put Stella's name on top of somebody else's name, taking away the opportunity from someone who put her resume legally and honestly, and might be in great need of that job, wow Disney thinks. So Stella now is working very hard, she wants a position that suits her talent, but she keeps being told no time and time again. I believe that lurking underneath that stodgy, half size too small bum plunger of a suit lies a kind man who wants to give a brilliant kid another shot. This must be one of the most unreal dialogues I've ever seen in a movie. No one talks like that in real life, let alone to the person who can make you lose your job. This movie is a joke. And also, what the heck was that scene with the banana slice? That was so unnecessarily disgusting. Stella changes the front window of the store, which catches the attention of the Baroness, and she's hired as one of her fashion designers. Bruh, just let go of her arm and let her take the cart. And how come no one noticed Horace carrying bags of stuff he just stole? He just speaks out loud, runs through the front door, and that's just it. This dumb movie. Finally, here we are, first day at work, and Stella's thrilled. The Baroness is a perfectionist, talented, and self-centered cruel woman. 
She honestly works way better as Corella than the actual Corella of this movie in comparison to the 1961's original Corella, to be honest. But sometimes her hair is up like Marge Simpson and honestly looks pretty weird. At some point, we're introduced to the first Disney gay character. Hooray, they announced another first gay Disney character. I cannot believe it. It's not like there's been 20 of them. It's also baffling how we get this pretty obvious hint, to say the least, about homophobia in London back in the day, but a few minutes later, we literally have the Baroness humiliating a man, calling him short and fat. Are we gonna talk about that too, or what? It's like Sam and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier are being all about people hating him for his skin color, but Sam himself made some jokes about French people. Wow, Disney, good job. Plus, this character's acting was painful sometimes. Did you, though? Roger now is just a pathetic feeble lawyer instead of the man who wrote the famous song Cruella de Vil and the only human in the movie who had brains to suspect that Cruella was involved in the kidnapping of his dog's puppies. Thanks, I hate it. So at some point Stella notices that the Baroness is wearing the same necklace from their mom wore on the night of her death. Oh my gosh, here we go. So Stella starts to come up with a plan to steal it from the Baroness, which will lead us to the stupid scene from the first trailer with the fire, the cape, the dress and all that. And there's still over an hour and a half of this movie. The pace on this movie drags like it's an eternity long. But I must give this movie credits for having one actual funny scene. She asks where the toilet is in French to the security guard. And he's all excited, wow, someone who speaks French, I get all excited and speak a lot when someone knows how to speak French, what do you do for the Baroness and blah 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 blah, and Sally's just like, wee. And the guard is like, okay, back to English, this girl doesn't speak French. Also, I'm surprised that I actually understood some of the French dialogue. Studying French on Duolingo is paying off, thanks Duo. So here we are, the party scene, and it was pathetic. The Baroness is known for kicking people out of her parties if she doesn't like something about them. A pet, a dress, sad people, whatever. But Stella ends up trespassing her property, breaks tons of champagne glasses, hurts her security guards, and makes a scene, but she has a conversation with Cruella afterwards. Why would she want to talk to her after all that? She trespassed into her property, broke her stuff, and hurt her security guards. It makes no sense. Oh yes, another fight scene of a skinny woman who takes down multiple stronger, taller and heavier men than her with a few blows, because scenes like that are not oversaturated at all. Thanks Disney, I hate it. At least the Baroness says that she's arresting Corella at the end of her conversation, as she should be. The wanting to talk to her right after that sort of contradicts what was stated about the Baroness a few minutes ago. Maybe the Baroness would have talked to Corella about her style or whatever once she was already in handcuffs. That would have made more sense. And finally, this is not how fire works. So Jasper puts mice under her tray, creating a distraction for Stella to steal the necklace and now the Baroness realizes that her necklace is gone. Could it be the only person who was physically close enough to you and standing in the right angle to do such a thing? Who also trespassed inside your property and hurt your guards? Really makes me think. Then we have a flashback scene of the Baroness pointing her finger at Stella's mom while blowing up a whistle, commanding her dogs to attack her, which barefacedly retcons the scene we saw at the beginning of the movie, because the Baroness wasn't doing that when Stella's mom fell off the cliff. We can clearly see how the Baroness was standing perfectly still the whole time. The one who can be seen moving her hands was Stella's mother for a very brief moment. There was no indication of a sudden move from the Baroness like picking up a whistle or pointing her finger at someone, or anything of that sort that could be clarified through that scene later on in the movie. And Stella's mother didn't even look like scared or confused at all because if the Baroness pointed her finger at her, as the dogs approached to ferociously snarling like that, she would have definitely looked either bewildered with such action or terrified. But she just kept the same facial expression, therefore reinforcing the impression that the whole thing was an accident and not a successful attempt of murder. That's not how plot twists work. Plus, it makes no sense. The dogs went outside because they were clearly chasing after Stella. Unless if you mean to tell me that the dogs heard the whistle in the middle of their chase, changing targets from Stella to her mom amid all that, conveniently showing up just in time to give us this plot twist back at the beginning of the movie, when the Baroness needed them to kill off Stella's mother. Because when the dogs attacked Stella's mother, we can actually hear the whistle blow at some point, but the whole thing still sounds so badly written, it's baffling. There's also something else about this scene that bugs me a bit. 
I'm a bit iffy about it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I'm still not entirely convinced that Stella could have figured out that the Baroness is the one responsible for her mother's death when she hears the whistle blow and the Baroness pointing at her dog at the party, taking us to that flashback scene of the Baroness pointing her finger at Stella's mom. The reason why we see the Baroness pointing at Stella's mom here, while there was no indication or whatsoever that such thing happened when we see the actual death scene at the beginning, is for the sake of making the audience barely see that she is the one who killed her, and for the sake of setting a plot twist, because something happens, but not quite as we think. But still, if we think about the death scene back then, Stella was still lying on the ground when the dogs jumped. And when they jumped, we can see that the Baroness was standing still, and she continues to do so when kid Stella stands up just in time to see her mom die. Plus, her mom keeping the same facial expression gives the strong indicator that her death was an accident and not an intended attack as I said before. How can Stella reach such conclusions so surely that the dogs were called for the precise purpose of killing her mother just by listening to that whistle and seeing the Baroness pointing at her dog when back then she saw nothing like that which could have helped her reach that conclusion along with the whistle's blow? No fingers pointed, no whistle being fetched, no sudden moves, nothing that could connect that scene at the beginning of the movie to this moment at the party. So they run away and Stella doesn't know how to drive a car but she knows how to turn the engine on without a key. This dumb movie. Stella wants revenge because now she knows that the Baroness killed her mom and she starts embracing her Cruella alter ego more deeply while mistreating Horace and Jasper and bossing them around to steal the dogs to get the necklace. And again, we have one more scene of this movie pathetically trying to reference the original 101 Dalmatians movie. You notice how some dog owners look a lot like their dogs. So Stella hires the million's first Disney gay character to work for her and he clearly sees the Dalmatians, which is really messed up. Because it's easily noticeable that those dogs are not theirs according to the Dalmatians' behavior. So he could have guessed that she is a thief and he also sees her harshly mistreating Jasper and Horace. So he could also realize that she's not really that amazing person the newspapers made her to be. But okay, this dumb movie I guess. And we still have about an hour and 10 minutes left until this movie is over. Anyway. So Stella keeps going to fashion expositions to ruin the spotlight moments of the Baroness to break her spirit and etc. Which was so lame. It felt more like Stella being a crazy trespasser than an actual alternative competition on the rise to break her spirit, but maybe it's just me. If Stella is so sure of her talent to the point of succeeding in overshadowing the Baroness to break her confidence in brand, then just to show up and expose your talent without, I don't know, locking up the Baroness in her own car against her will or riding a motorcycle like a lunatic while risking injuring someone badly? Seriously, if someone does what she has done, I just assume most people think, okay, who's the crazy lady? Then to actually assume is that she is a new fashion designer in this race to find her place under the spotlight. But who cares? Slay Queen. And what she does is really messed up, like fastening to her car with a huge belt, preventing the Baroness from getting out, and Stella just posing for pictures on top of her car's roof. What the heck? And everyone did nothing, just amazed with whatever it is that she was wearing while there was somebody else locked up against her will. This is so messed up, but Slay Queen, I guess? Queen of Mean, everyone? More like an unhinged Queen of Crunch. So Stella continues to do that as Cruella, and the media just can't get enough of her. They're absolutely crazy about Cruella and they know nothing about her. The Baroness can find out where she lives and the police can find more leads. How come can't the police find more leads? She's wearing an absolutely long dress on a trash truck in the middle of the streets. She's standing on the top of a car with its own owner locked up against her will. That's not exactly hard to miss. The Baroness wants to sue Cruella, as she should be, but Roger says they don't have a legal case for her. What about trespassing a private property, physical assault, property damage, locking the Baroness up against her will? What the heck are you talking about? The Baroness has plenty of reasons to want to sue her. So the night of the show comes and the Baroness is flustered because they can't open the vault where she had put her dresses because Jasper and Horace had invaded the place the night before. When they manage to open it up, tons of moths fly away, making everyone freak out because the golden beads sewn by Stella were actually moths? Same energy. In the meantime, as people were leaving the place because of the moths, they started going to the Zara party not far from there. And guess what? It's Cruella's exposition, and she's dressed in what seems to be a Dalmatian fur coat, and that's where the Baroness had it. 
I just think that's very far-fetched for the same people who were freaking out about tons of mods a minute ago would be okay to go to another exposition they happened to find right after that. So Stella arrived at her apartment, but is surprised to see that the Baroness and her guards were there. Finally, someone put the puzzle pieces together. She reveals that she knows Gurel's real identity, and Stella says this at this point. You really are a psycho. As if she hasn't behaved like one for the past 90 minutes or something. But don't worry, it gets way worse. So the Baroness sets her apartment on fire and leaves Stella to die, but surprise, surprise, she is saved by the loyal butler or something, and he gives Stella the necklace, which had a key that opens up a small box with Stella's birth certificate, because surprise, surprise, the Baroness is Stella's real mother. This dumb movie. So we finally know why Stella is like that. We know why she couldn't let go of her Cruella persona, because she is the daughter of a crazy, cruel woman. Like mother, like daughter, I guess. Why can't Disney villains be villains just because like before? All of them must have a reason to become one now and all their attempts to justify that suck. So Cruella is what she is because of bad genetics and mommy issues. Give me a freaking break. This movie's entire existence is an embarrassment. After that, she fully accepts her Cruella side. I guess you were always scared that I'd be a psycho. I'm Cruella. Oh. Brilliant. Born bad. And a little bit mad. <laughs> oh yes, the disastrous mixer of Harley Quinn and Alice from Batwoman. Thanks, Disney, I hate it. Plus, it doesn't really look like she was this psychomaniac all the time ever since she found Jasper and Horace and started living with them. It doesn't feel like they knew that her Cruella side was always there or that she would let that show up every now and then. They are very upset with the side of hers, which gives me this strong impression that they've never seen her Cruella before, but maybe it's just me thinking too hard about this dumb movie. So Stella frees Jasmine and Horace from prison by destroying the police station door with a truck, and what the heck is that for? She reveals why she's a cringe maniac because of her mommy issues and they are agreed to work with her again. This is simply pathetic. So here we are, the Baroness's grand party, but Stella offered black and white wigs like her hair to all guests in the name of the Baroness and apparently all of them took the bait. The Baroness fears that the real Cruella will show up because a body wasn't found in the wreckage, so orders were given to take her as soon as she's seen. So the guests start arriving and the security guards just charge at them as soon as they see the black and white hair like a bunch of idiots. They're mobilizing guests, knocking them down without thinking twice about that, like, should we just charge and knock down that person like that and check out who they are later? Should we double check before just in case we don't hurt the wrong person? They are just going for it, it was pathetic. Some of these guests were so different from the real Cruella. Some of them are actually old ladies. Basically the only thing they had in common was her wig matching her hair. Why would the guards just charge at them without giving a second thought? Even the guards watching the security cameras wouldn't think twice before charging them like complete incompetence. If it was harder to identify them because all guests were wearing the wig, then just ask them to stop and check their real identification for a second. Who is not the real Cruella will see no big deal in doing so. They will see no issue in complying if it is for security reasons or controlling the access to the event. They were completely unaware of the guards' task to find the real Cruella and lock her up. Alright, let's talk about the confrontation scene. Stella is standing right where her mother was the night she died, and Stella reveals that she is the daughter the Baroness had sent away to die. The CGI landscape in the confrontation scene was equally bad and distracting. So the Baroness is all about Stella being a genius because she got it from her mom. They're about to hug, and Stella asks if she won't push her off the cliff, to which the Baroness just dismisses like a joke. You're not fooling anyone here. In the meantime, the guests were told to assemble outside and they all gather together just in time to see the Baroness during the obvious, pushing Stella to her death. But Stella didn't die because she had a freaking parachute in her clothes. A parachute. What did I just see? What the heck is this writing? This dumb movie. So Stella survived, the Baroness is arrested, and Stella pulled out some papers, and now she's the owner of the mansion, and she adopted the name Cruella de Vil, given that Stella is thought to be dead. Which makes no sense. OG Cruella's name is an obvious reference to Cruel Devil. She lives in a state called Hell Hall. There's a little devil-like thing in her phone. Perdita barely hears Cruella approaching, and she hides from her, terrified. She wanted to kill actual puppies to make coats. 
All those things were to show what a terrible person Cruella is, and not because she's a maniac, a queen of fashion designers or whatever like in this remake. And this new Cruella did nothing cruel like OG Cruella did. This new Cruella behaved more like an unhinged person and a cringe lunatic more than anything. What she did throughout this two hour long movie never justified her getting called Cruella de Vil. It's simply to make a reference to the original 1961 movie. This is all a complete joke. So yeah, those were my thoughts about this remake. I know it was going to be terrible, but not that terrible. Just as I expected, this movie achieved nothing. Maybe it will make $1 billion in purchases on Disney+, Plus, but just like every single Disney live-action remake, it will fall into the bottomless pit of irrelevance in a matter of months, and the original 101 Dalmatians movie will still remain as a memorable movie after all these decades. Oh, the irony. This Cruella doesn't have a single personality trait that makes her iconic. It's all the extravagant clothes, the styles, making scandalous scenes and her laugh, but that's just it. Cruella's personality in this movie is a big empty hole, and all things I've mentioned just now are superfluous things trying to cover up the huge void that is the absence of an actual personality. Precisely what OG Cruella had, hence why she is an iconic villain to this day, despite being from a movie produced back in 1961. The tragic background is equally pathetic. Disney villains from the past did not have any background, which justified why they were villains. And yet all those villains are iconic to this day, after all those years. While no one could care less now about Angelina Jolie as Maleficent, Luke Evans as Gaston, Kate Blanchard as Lady Tremaine, and etc. And Emma Stone's Cruella is doomed to have the same fate. It's all a matter of mere months. And as if things weren't terrible enough, you gotta pay 30 more dollars on top of the service to watch this masterpiece. Don't you underestimate my power, Disney? Just don't. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching, and if you like my content, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time around.